Hi guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to another video tutorial on creating an ASP.NET Core application with Angular 7. In the last video tutorial, we finished coding the delete functionality for our project. So the admin user can go ahead and delete the products. Finally, we have to just work on this details button, which when clicked, the user should be redirected to a page which will display the details of the product that was clicked. So let's go ahead and quickly code this functionality. So go back to our application, go to the product list dot component dot ts, and just below the method to delete, we are going to add or code the method to display the single product. So this method will be called on select. That's because we are going to select the product inside the table, and then we are going to see or uh, view the details of the products so obviously we need to pass the product itself to the parameter so we'll pass the product and this method is going to be void which means it's not returning anything and all we are going to do is the selected product we are going to assign the selected product object that we created over here we have created a selected product object but we have not yet used it. So we are going to do is that selected product object, which does not have any value. So selected product object is equal to this product that we are passing in the parameter. Finally, what we want to do is after that, we want to navigate the user to the product page where he can view the details of the product. So to navigate the user, all I'm going to do is I'm going to use the router object that we create instantiated in the constructor of this uh, class. So we will use the router object and we will navigate the user to the details product page. So private router is going to be and the type that we will use here it's going to be the type of router or a UTR and make sure the missing reference you have added comes from angular mod router not from node underscore modules save this and if I go back here I shouldn't see any errors all I'm doing is navigating to the URL products forward slash the ID of the product that is selected now now go and open your product routing module and here you will see the path when we are navigating the user to the path which contains the id of the product we have to show the product details component not the product list component therefore to design the view we should design it inside product details component so go ahead and open the product details component dot html and product detail component dot ts and here we have to write the code now so quickly we will go ahead and instantiate the required objects in the constructor so we require a activated route object we require a router object and we require the product service object itself to get the list or to get the details of the product so let's instantiate them so i have created three objects here let's add the missing references quickly so i have added all the missing references and we would also need to input use the input decorator for the product so let's quickly add the input decorator and i'll tell you why we need to use it but first let's go ahead and create the input decorator input and using that what we want to do we will call the object as product which will be of type product so that is it and we have added the references we have imported the interface for the product so why do i need to create this input decorator of type product and the reason I need to create that, first you need to understand why we use the input decorator. First of all, the idea of input 
or output decorator there is one more decorator called as output is to exchange data between two components two or more components so in this case when the product list component somebody clicks on the product list components details button then we are redirecting or navigating the user to another component which is called as product details component so that means this data of the product that we are clicking needs to be shared with another component and the other another component needs to display that data on that component view understanding so when we click here this component is passing the data to another component called as product details component so whenever we are sharing data between two components or whenever we want to share data between two components we have to make sure that we are using the input decorator so we are in this case in the product details component is receiving the data so that's why i'm using input whereas if i'm sending the data then i will use output okay so in case if somebody asks you why is this input decorator used input de decorator is used to receive data whereas output decorator is used to send data so now we are receiving the data now we need to display the data okay now so in the ng on it we have to initialize few objects so let's do that so first have you have if you have noticed i have instantiated the activated route now the activated so activated route will help us to get the id from the url which is basically called as params if you have come across uh, this word params so let's say i'm clicking on this object over here correct this object whose id is 225 so this id will be added to the url and i will be redirected to a page which will display the product with id 225 now this 225 is called as a params this is nothing but it is a params one of the params so now when we want to access the params in the url we need to make use of activated route so therefore using this activated route object what i'm going to do first thing is let id object is equal to and i'm going to say this oh sorry the route object that i've created dot snapshot using the snapshot i'm going to call the params property and the params property what i need i just need the id i just need this to get the id okay so we also will have to use the plus sign over here so if you look at the product service when we want to get the product bytes id what are we doing here we are passing the id of the product now this id is a number and when we go back to the product details component here the route params will get the id as a string therefore by using this plus sign we are making sure that we are converting the id into an int so it's not going to get it as a string so now what we are going to do is if you leave this it is going to get it as a string and we have to pass it as a number so what we will do here is we will then after we have got the id we will call the get products by id method on the product service object and then we will pass the id and then we will subscribe to the result and then the result we will assign it to this product object that is created so so what's going to happen when the user is going to click on the button the entire component will redirect the user to this particular url this url will load, load the product details component which will fire off the constructor instantiate these objects get the id of the product from the route 
and then get the details of that product and then display that product so we are receiving the details of that product and now we are going to display it so now this product will contain all the properties of the product that we wish to display like this so now we this product contains all the details so now we need to make sure we display those details inside the component or the HTML component so let's quickly go to the HTML component of the details let's get rid of this code replace the code with the following code you'll get all this code in the dev op repos so you don't have to worry about it so I'm not just going to spend time coding the entire display page in bootstrap so all I've done is if there's no products then we are going to display the products uh, to, uh, no products to display well here what we are doing is we are creating a container that will contain the details of the product so what we do what we want to do here is if there's no products we will give this template an id of no products and then the next thing that we want set a condition on this entire container which displays the details of the product saying that if there is no product then we basically display the no product template but if there is product then we will display this template and if there is no product then we will display this template here with the id no product so in this way uh, users will not see any error they will just see no product in the h2 tag finally i am just adding the source of the product image and inside the bootstrap card body i have the product name using pipe in uppercase the currency i have already told you how you can use this currency when we created the data tables currency pipes so pretty much it i have the color coding for the type of products just try to make it like the product is available in different colors now the next thing that i want to do here is add the css styling for this uh, particular product view which we have not done yet so open the product details css and add the css that i have coded once again guys you can create your own view to display the details of the product i have designed it as per how i would like to display it and this is some basic design that i have used but you can design it in your own way so now i have applied the css styling i have created the html content to display the product and i have also added the required logic here and the next thing that we want to do is first go and run the application so that we can see our project so application is loaded let's log in as an admin once we have logged in i can go here and now we should be able to click but we have not yet called the event on the button itself so let's go ahead and call our on delete method so product is component dot ts as you know we are going to have the on select method i'm sorry that we are going to, we need to call on the component so the on select method needs to be called on the button itself so here we have the button which is basically going to select the product so click event and then add the method on select and very important we cannot call the method empty we have to pass the product that's the row that contains the product properties as well so now save this go back to application application refreshes let's click on the details and now we are redirected to the details of the product as we can see it's hp omen canadian dollars and it has organized the the, the pipes have organized the price in currency the description the model number the color can be selected 
based on the user's requirement. I have just coded this basic CSS styling over here. If you like it, you can use it. And if you don't, you can change it. And there's this image I have added. Now, the gallery wouldn't work because we just have one image. And in this course, I'm not teaching you, in this project, I'm not teaching you how to create the gallery. We will be adding more projects which will contain creating a gallery, how to implement payment gateways in your projects and so on. So please subscribe to our channel to always get latest content. And for now, uh, this should be the end of the CRUD functionality where we have displayed the product. The add to cart button directly takes you to the home because we are not implementing that in this project. It's out of the scope of this project because we would need a payment gateway as well for that. So for now, this is the end of the CRUD functionality. If you like this video tutorial, please like and subscribe my channel. And in the next video tutorial, all we have to do is we need to make sure when the user logs in as a customer, he is not able to see the add product button and also is not able to see the edit and delete button only able to see the details because the customer can only see the details so we will do that in the next video tutorial and that will be the last video tutorial for this project series please like and subscribe my channel tech howdy if you have any questions please use the comment section the code will be pushed into devops repos once again free to download the link will be in the description thank you